This past Monday, I did a podcast on the Sandcast podcast. It's a lot. Uh, with Triborn and Travis Wordermer. And uh, what this is, is we live streamed it to our MCK volleyball channel. So I took that footage and I put it in this video. Now, you don't have to watch the entire thing. I've timestamped all the things that we talked about and the questions that they asked me in the description below. So you can go there, see what you want to watch, just click the timestamp and it'll fast forward the video to that exact part. So some of the things you can find in the timestamps below is why me and Riley got into a fist fight with each other in New York in 2016. Um, what it was like for me to play with Reed Pretty and then Ty Loomis. Also, you know, after winning San Francisco finals, why I decided to partner with my brother again. Also, there's a Wilson giveaway. I'll put that in the timestamp as well. And I'll give you instruction on how you can enter to win a signed volleyball from Riley and I. Now, if you don't want to watch the entire video, I get it. So you can download the podcast, I'll put a link in the description below, and you can listen to it on your car drive or whatever you want. But you should check out their other podcast. They've interviewed April Ross, Phil Delhauser, and many more international and AVP players. So disclaimer, we use this equipment called Sling Studio, which allows us to wirelessly broadcast with multiple cameras for this live stream. So we did have some te technical difficulties and the audio portion for the first four minutes is a little echoey but hang with it, it's pretty cool. Like I said, just use the timestamps to see what you want to uh, check out and uh, let us know what you think. All right, thank you. So, uh, we're good? Yeah, yeah. Sandcast. Yeah. Yeah. All, All right, right. Well, this, this is Sandcast. Sandcast. We, have a, we have a lot of action going on here today. We got, what, three cameras? I think we got some, we got our audio, we got a video producer, an audio producer, we got an, an actress doing the lighting for us today. So, so welcome back again. <laughs> we have uh, Madison McKinnon on today, one of my favorite lefties. Mad dog. What's happening, bud? What's going on? Good yeah, we, we got this whole thing figured out. Is this how all the video operations go with the McKinnons? Just, it is? just throwing stuff together? No. We, uh, to be honest, we really don't know what we're doing with all of our, audio, or all of our video equipment, but yeah, we watch videos on YouTube to learn how to make YouTube videos. That's a cool uh, education. I know, it's like the Matrix, like 1.0. It's like downloaded information, <laughs> watch it. Okay, let's go do it. And that's kind of like where I, where I wanted to start the podcast with what you're doing now, because it's been such a big hit this offseason. Like you guys have had the biggest offseason, I think, of like any of the actual, any players going overseas and stuff, because your videos are blowing up. Yeah, I mean, it's been, a, it's been a fun time. Riley and I have always talked about making these sort of videos because really there's, there's not that much volleyball content online. And so coming into this off season, actually right at the end of last season, we had a uh, kind of like our plan of what we wanted to do, a rough plan, because a lot of our stuff has changed. I think that's what has made our channel kind of enjoyable is we try one thing, test it out, if it doesn't work, all right, let's do something new. But it's been just a fun experience, especially when you're not playing, to use your volleyball skills towards, you know, making some digital content. Right. And where did you learn how to do this stuff? I know that you went back to USC to get your master's, right? Was that part of what you learned, or was this just all just on your own, so just winging it? I went and got my master's after I got injured at SC uh, in my fifth year at communication management. Don't ask me exactly what that is. It's kind of a, a broad term. I get it. I know. I'm okay at communication. But um, one of the things that I did was uh, I took a few different classes and uh, two of them you had to actually create video content. One of them was called Transmedia. Um, basically taking a storyline and adopting it to as many different mediums as possible. And the other one was this Hollywood 3.0 where we actually had to make a web series, which was incredibly hard. So I started playing around with, um, with a camera I had and then USC offers the Adobe Creative Cloud. So I tried Photoshop, like everyone tries Photoshop, and I was like, I'm never going to be good at this. And then I went to Premiere Pro. So through SC, I had access to Premiere Pro, which, disclaimer, for some reason I still have access to it. And Riley has signed on to my account. So I knew how to do a little bit of Premiere Pro, and then I taught Riley a little bit, but we learned through YouTube, and so we can both edit our videos. We both still use the same subscription for Adobe. I don't know when that's going to end. You're there, it's like that, but that yeah. Netflix yeah. plan that everyone has. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> we're on the unofficial family plan. So when you guys started this video series, what was the what was the objective? Like, what was the goal or direction you wanted to go in, and how many zigs and zags has it taken since? Um, you know, the the goal was to. I mean, we just enjoyed making videos for the most part. Um, 
And it's something that we never had the opportunity to explore. We both studied business, but we always, you know, enjoy movies. And so, um, sorry, can you repeat your question again? Just yeah, the, what direction did you guys want to start with the videos? Yeah. Because I knew yeah. you said you, like, you said that you have no idea what you're doing. So I'm assuming that it's taking some zigs and zags yeah. to so, where you are now. So we initially went on YouTube to, like, you know, find some beach volleyball content, you know, answer some questions that we had. And there was nothing out there. So we thought, you know, we don't have all the answers, and I hope our videos don't come across like that, like this is the say all be all, but we wanted to give people um, a different perspective of what we've learned because we've only been on the tour for three years. We grew up playing beach volleyball, but the stuff that we've learned between growing up playing beach and now is, is completely different. And I think, I mean, on YouTube is the unique opportunity of sharing that information. And I think there's a lot of fans out there that want to know what the pros know. And so it's, you know, it fills that void and it kind of uh, closens that gap, closens that gap between fans and pros, which I think makes our sport so cool. Yeah. And I think that one of the things that I've found just in terms of there is really no content, like there's not many other beach volleyball there's writers not. that I'm competing with. There's no other beach volleyball podcast that we're competing we're with. And there's, yeah, we're killing it. <laughs> we're monopolizing the game. And what I think John Mayer. Well, they're, they're coaching. <laughs> they're coaching. No, they do they're, indoor. They're a coaching podcast. Yeah, that's more like okay, it's okay. a lot of that's indoor stuff too. All right. And technical. We just, like just we just kind of wing it. Players and yeah. drink wine and hang out and talk podcast. And I think it's the accessibility to the players that you mentioned though that is so unique about this sport. Like when I started writing about it, like I got try I got your phone number with like I sent like a couple of text messages out and got it and you were the fifth ranked player in the world so that would be like me sending three texts and I have Kevin Durant's number <laughs> yeah. you just don't see it very often and yeah that's a good, good comparison yeah right? I think <laughs> no relatively about right yeah so I don't know what number five I, I forget I, well KD's I'm, probably like one or two yeah with LeBron KD and then after that it's kind of a stepping stone a little bit depends who you like who, yeah who is the NBA player that you compare yourself with oh whoa now that we have I, Chase Budinger, an NBA guess, player on tour. I'm not the Chase Budinger. <laughs> <laughs> um, Kevin Love. Kevin Love. Versatile, big I'd, guy, I'd like can to do it all. I myself to Kevin Durant, but I already said that Phil's the white Kevin Durant. Okay. So I guess, that's, I'm, that's I, guess fair. I guess I'm LeBron now. I think no, Alisson is more LeBron-ish, LeBron just not, body uh, type. I take that. Yeah, but he doesn't have the touch that LeBron has. Yeah. Well, with the exit, I'm going to think about that. We're getting this conversation going, Travis. Madison's getting a, a microphone etiquette lesson Sorry. in the background. Like I said, I don't know what <laughs> I'm doing. But with the oh, accessibility to the players, long. you've been able to create this content that's blowing up. And, and you were talking about your YouTube channel growing, I'm assuming, much faster than you probably thought. Yeah, uh, a, lo a lot faster than we thought. We actually had the opportunity to uh, go to the YouTube studio in um, Playa Vista, and I found out I went there. You can't have access if you have under 10,000 subscribers. So I just went there, check it out, ended up finding out a lot of people come there to like, hey, can I use this? Can I use that? Right. What we found out is I told them how long we've been around and um, what our subscribership was, and they were they were astonished. You know, and that's not because we make unbelievable content, but because there is an existing market for volleyball fans, and that need for video content is not being filled. And why? So we have so many different types of video content like we have the dude perfect right with the trick shots and stuff why yeah. did you go the direction of i don't want to call your videos instructional because they're so much more fun than that like here's how to bump set right you guys bring a, like a lot of humor and entertainment into it but why did you choose to go that direction i think that's where we naturally went like we're not incredibly serious people and especially when we think about making videos we want to make something like fun something right. that's that's what's the best part about doing it. If we just kind of told you A, B, and C in a monotone voice and in incredibly instructional right. and was down at the beach and did a 12-minute video, like that's boring. That's yeah. boring as – sorry, excuse me. It's just boring, <laughs> right? So we, we enjoy just kind of throwing whatever and, and anything out there, and that's what's so cool about it is we've gotten great feedback, and it's allowed us to kind of be silly and kind of do things that we would normally not do. and. I mean, it's, it's so rewarding to be able to do something like that. 
Yeah, and now I mean, like you, I feel like you've expanded so much. It started with the instructional videos, and then you, now you got drones flying around everywhere, and one's crashing in Hermosa the yeah, other day, which, <laughs> which is great. So I've day. crashed the drone once on a van trip. I have footage of that, <laughs> and then Riley crashed it when we did the video of Chase. Actually, the passing video of Chase, you can see the drone crash in like the opening scenes. Riley wanted to put it in there, and then but you the, can see the drone crash. And then the other day. <laughs> someone filming you guys oh alex. and then alex bake had his mavic pro and uh, down at like yeah d just south of the pier and the uh the lifeguards came out and yelled at him because you're not allowed to fly drones out there and he got rattled i've been there i've been rattled with a drone <laughs> and that's when i crashed mine and alex ended up crashing his. it's funny i know that so in huntington the other day uh jake gibb was doing like a commercial shoot i don't know what the sponsor was for but they had drones going and so you know what if you You've been to the Huntington Pier. You know there's, like, steps yeah. by the pier. Uh -huh. So that it's where kind of a, a lot of, like, homeless people sleep and stuff. So one came over and was saying that I'm from the Department of Homeland Security, and yeah. you guys need to stop. They're no. showing you she was losing her mind. It was one of the fun <laughs> things. And, you know, Jake, like, he's not going to say anything. He's just sitting there just – biding his time they couldn't shoot the commercial for like half hour she's like, i'm from homeland security and that drone's illegal no way <laughs> it was great oh Have you, that's fantastic what? yeah it was it was too funny yeah, but you guys funny. just had lifeguards saying hey bring the drone down yeah we've we've luckily never well we we fly our drones in um authorized areas we don't fly our, fly our drones in any unauthorized areas so we haven't had that sort of problem yeah <laughs> 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 yeah yeah totally yeah, and so, <laughs> so you guys, when the drone crashed the other day, you were practicing with Sean Rosenthal and Chase Budinger. Mm -hmm. And Chase is someone that no one has seen on the beach, yet, aside from like six man or four man, yeah, which I don't really think counts necessarily. Yeah. Uh, so what? How is Chase on the beach? Just what's your first impression of him? Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Not that he's shit, Total but high. he's a really good player. And to add another great elite, you know, big guy in there. It sucks for me. I think you got to understand you know? that uh, people have to understand that he was probably the number one recruit in the nation for volleyball. Oh, by far and away. He played volleyball coming out of high school. So the, the guy grew up playing volleyball, made the smart choice, went to the NBA, and yeah, made a decent living there. So if I can remember correctly, he was in the same class as Kavika Shoji, Garrett Mwanga Kutia, who's All-American from UCLA. And then I know Spencer McLaughlin played against him. So did my brother all yeah. growing up in club. And Tri's right. He was hands down I watched the play. best player out of those. And you're talking about Olympians here. Kavika, Garrett. Garrett was on his team, and Chase was a better player than he was. And that's yeah. what one of my buddies coaches at UCI and helps out with the national team. And he said that if Chase would have stuck with volleyball, there's no question yeah. that he would have been on the national team. Mm -hmm. So right. I think that – so there's just his volleyball that, base. Yeah, the athleticism. What an idiot. <laughs> however, however, U.S. national say. team for volleyball or NBA <laughs> basketball NBA. player? Yeah. Dude, he could have been on the beach this whole time. What a dummy. <laughs> and now you have made the transition from indoor to beach, and I know that it's not an easy one. Mm -hmm. And your story of you and Riley making that transition to beach is one of my favorites when you guys were practicing. Oh, no yeah, yeah, No one could yeah, see yeah, you guys. Yeah. So – a lot of our listeners, like for me, for example, I never played indoor volleyball. I have no idea how hard it is. Mm -hmm. So can you walk us through just the transition from indoor to beach, why it's so difficult, and just the process of it and how long it might take a guy like Chase, who has an indoor background that's yeah. phenomenal, but there's a lot of skills that might be difficult to translate. Well, I, I can't say that transitioning to the beach was as hard as it is for some indoor players because, like Try, I mean, we grew up playing at the Outrigger. So we more grew up playing beach went to high school and college for indoor, and then went back to the beach, right? Also, Madison, you played on the junior national. I feel like you were almost like a, a beach specialist growing up, a lot more than some of us, because you got to play on the youth national team, right? Yeah, fortunately. Not many people played on – I didn't even play on the youth national team, actually. Yeah, there, there wasn't – to be honest, it there wasn't that much competition back, well, the back then. Yeah, it was like you <laughs> sign up and you're there, but you got to play, and you were kind of the guy for, for that age group. Uh, kind of, but I mean, I mean, what would have – awesome experience to be able to do that right. like i was 17 years old went to the netherlands i think i got caught drinking by usav but neither here nor there <laughs> <laughs> but i mean being a being a young kid being able to travel the world you get that like you you get that opportunity to play internationally and it's like whoa i could do this later on after college so being able to experience that made me want to play beach that much more it's like wow this is an amazing experience i mean you've been there yeah like meeting people from all over the world, these international competitions, and some of the international teams are so much nicer than some of the U.S. teams. 
Yeah, I mean, it's it's a sp- it's a legit experience for sure. And I think, I mean, especially when you're young, like it's you're like, holy crap! They just gave me a shirt that says USA volleyball on it. Like this is some sick. I'm on the national team. Yeah, you like think it's the once you get all that ever. USA gear. Yeah, I made it. <laughs> yeah. It's just like, cool. It's just cool <laughs> to <laughs> say too. Yeah. Yeah. I never thought of it that way. You're right. And so you were three time state champ at Punahou? So yeah. Three time state champ. I actually uh disclaimer, obviously I lost one year. I lost to Brad Lawson, who's actually our producing our, the sound our sound designer and producing the sound today. So yeah, shout out to Brad, he beat me once. <laughs> but yeah. So you time. were three time state champ in high school and then you made two final fours in college? Uh at USC? Yeah, two Final Fours. One was with you at Penn State. Yeah. And then, and then the second one, the Try and Riley were gone. Tony Sorelli single-handedly took us to the finals <laughs> with with Micah Christensen. Not a bad team. I had nothing to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then you went overseas to play indoor. So what uh, was your experience with sort of ish? I know you were well, kind of in and out of injuries, right? Experience. Gosh, where do I start? <laughs> so – um I, I got injured my, my senior year at SC and then redshirted that year, stayed a fifth year. That's where I did grad school. And after that, I was like, you know, I, I never really felt like I really reached my potential in indoor. So I was like, you know what? Uh, I really want to go play internationally. Riley had a few experience, a uh, few years experience playing. And so what happened was Riley was kind of on his way out, but he's like, hey, let's try and get on the same team here. And I was like, dude, that would be awesome. But – it was tough to get me on a team. So Riley did some finagling, and we ended up getting on a team in Greece, in Lamia. And so, I, unfortunately, a month before uh, we left, I, like, uh, I injured my knee. I think it was a stress fracture in my knee. And so I ended up leaving, going to Athens, living with my agent for a month while Riley practiced with the team in Lamia, like two hours north of Athens. Um, long story short, our team wasn't great. The owner was a little shady, like most international Standard. U.S. <laughs> international <laughs> players have dealt with. I'm not saying anything new. Uh, we had our ups and downs, and um, Riley ended up. Things were just not going well. Riley ended up signing a contract to uh, to to Italy back in November, and I was going to wait it out. And I, I can go into depth of how this this went. It's kind of a funny story. I go but, for it. Um, we're, we're all about the funny yeah, stories here. So w- what happened was we went to Athens to play in this match. Uh, the owner told me, if you don't play well in this match, you're out. I was like, no well, pressure, though. I don't really care because no one was getting paid on the team at the time. <laughs> yeah. I was like, eh, no whatever. One, no one was getting paid in the whole country of Greece at the time. So we, we played in that match. We, their international players weren't supposed to play that game because they weren't getting paid. But then they ended up getting, pa- getting paid before the match. It's, it's complicated, but we lose in three. I got player of the match. I played well. Played really, really well. And so our coach allowed us to stay in the town um, when we played there. So we stayed in Athens. I stayed with two of the guys on the team. We had a great time. And then we took a train back to our place. And I get back to my apartment, the one that Riley used to live in. We had three bedrooms. I go open my room, and I open the door, and there's a guy from Brazil sleeping in my bed. (laughs) Sleeping in my bed. (laughs) And I'm kind of hungover, and I turn on the lights. I'm like... What the F is going on? <laughs> and he wakes up kind of like, oh, looks at me, scoffs at me. And he, he can't really speak English. So I was like, dude, get out of my room. Like, I'm not leaving yet. You got to <laughs> take my spot. Player of the match. Take my spot. <laughs> and so what ended up happening was uh, obviously the owner got this new outside hitter to come in. But because we had um, a limited number of, of international players, I had to sign off on my release. So I was like, I ain't signing that paper until you pay me my money. Right. So paid me my money. I signed it, called Riley. Riley had a two-story bedroom uh, apartment on the beach in Italy, in Ravenna. I was like, dude, well, let me come stay with you. I, I don't want to go home yet. Yeah. So I went there. I played housewife for like three months and just kicked it and chilled. That's awesome. So yeah, that was my time in Europe. Sorry if that was too long. I regret no. not visiting you guys out there. <laughs> yeah, we had a great I time. I planned my trip the whole time. I was busy doing random things uh, i feel yeah it so was a fun time though so you and riley have sort of always been partners in way because like riley kind of comes you hey let's go overseas he pulled some strings you're going indoor then yeah. you kicked it with him for a couple months and then you guys started out on the beach 
Have you? This is oh yeah, kind I, of I, I, I didn't get me. how he started on the beach. It's, sorry. And and I'll I'll take the story with the random Brazilian <laughs> waking up. Sorry. <laughs> day. We weren't sleeping together. He was in my yeah. bed. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't so, know him before this. <laughs> so I in. It it blows my mind though how much you and Riley are always wanting to be partners because like me and my brother will play golf together for like nine holes and if we're on the same team we're screaming at each other by the ninth. And you guys have you guys always been tight? There's a whole other so, thing. Yeah, I'm. No, I mean like we we go back and forth like any other sibling, right? If I told you, yeah, we get along, we get along great, right? Best of friends. That'd be not true. Can I swear on this? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, there might just be maybe, maybe no like f bombs. Okay. It's probably all right. All right. Sorry. Anyway, <laughs> so we won't edit it um, I I, I got to tell you, I, I'm gonna throw it back to Italy just a little bit, and you know, m my career in Greece didn't go that well, and I was kind of, I mean, some 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 athletes reach this point or not, but I was kind of like, I'm done, right? And me and Riley spent countless hours at his kitchen table, in Italy, drinking wine and talking story. Um, solving all the world's problems, you know, standard things. Sounds like what we do on Sandcast. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and um, I, Riley comes up. He's like, hey, what if we go home and play on the beach? And I was kind of resigned to be like, you know what? I, I'm done. I was, I was actually done with volleyball. I was cool with it. I was going to go back to grad school, finish that, and, you know, move on with my life. Volleyball was like, you know, after getting injured before Greece, it was just so – it was tough, right? So Riley convinced me, he's like, you know what, let's just play together on the beach, let's see what happens. And I was, wasn't for it at first, and then when we got back, he kept talking to me, I was like, you know what, let's, let's give it a run, let's give it a try. And so what you were saying before, we, we were living in Marina del Rey, and we were practicing by ourselves with one volleyball, with no lines, it's really south, um, sorry, really south Venice, where no one would ever see us because we were too embarrassed. So that kind of gives you a little background of how our career was started playing beach. And to answer your question, our relationship, it goes up and down, but you can ask further questions from there. I just wanted to establish it with that. I remember yeah. when, when they first came out, I was like, yes, Maddie and Riley are on the beach now. I call them up. They're like, no, we're not. We're not practicing with you guys. We're not ready. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, why not? Like, what are you guys doing? I remember yeah. trying. No. <laughs> <laughs> we're not ready to practice with you guys. No. We suck right now. I remember yeah. try try texted Riley and Riley's like, dude, try wants to practice with us. I was like, dude, no, <laughs> no. And I remember the first practice running practice with Try and Hyden. I remember John Hyden, who's an unbelievable player, still is. And I remember hitting down balls, and I was so nervous hitting down <laughs> balls at these guys. I'm like, I'm totally gonna, I'm totally gonna f this up. I'm never gonna call back. Hyden's gonna be like. Try it. These yeah, are like, the guys you bring. Me. Like <laughs> these guys, me, they're good. They're good. They're good. Trust me. Give them another shot. And at the time, we had at least eight-inch beards too, the wait, longest they they'd were, ever been. Wait, they were longer than what you rocking now. Oh yeah. Yeah. They, they were, were here. I have uh, my ID somewhere. I'll show you that. I'll give it a close up. <laughs> yeah. Later. Yeah, we'll do that later. Mm. That's hilarious though. But I know that feeling because every time, the first time that I practiced with you, I had that same feeling. I was like, God, I got to hit this high line and bounce. Dude, I, <laughs> I, I, get it, I got it with all the, the top players. Once you get that call, I mean, I remember when me and Riley first started off, getting the call from Try and Hayden was unreal, but Try was a friend. Yeah, I remember, the, me was I remember the next people that we were like, dude, who called us? was Kurt Topol and Mark Burek. I, mean, I swear to God, I, yeah. hey, I, well, I was like – Riley, we're moving up. Not moving up from you guys, because you were a friend, you know? Right, right. These are guys who don't know us. Yeah, this wasn't a favor. Yeah, right, this right. wasn't a favor. Yeah. So we're like, dude, we're moving up. I can't remember the team we got to practice with who was in, like, the top, but we were like, whoa. And speaking of Burek, in your first qualifier in New York City, right, that was number one for you guys? Yeah. In 20, was it 15? Uh, 24. Yeah, I, I think, think it was. So. I think it was mid 2015. You beat Mark Burek and Adam Roberts to in the round to get in. No, I beat or I beat Topple and Burek in the round to get in, and I beat Brad Lawson and Adam Roberts in the round. Ooh, before okay, the round. okay. Our producer. Sorry, yeah. Brad. <laughs> and so here, like here, you guys were. I mean, you were you like starstruck playing, oh, yeah. just practicing with Burek. I, th I think we had just practiced with them right before that. I think they probably called us because they thought, oh, we might be facing these guys. Maddie, Just let, a little scouting report. Sorry. Yep, little, I'm little getting in on the wine action yeah. as well. Maddie, what, what kind of wine you got? What kind oh, okay. Of so you prefer? This is uh, Reckless Love by Rebel Coast Wines. It is a sponsor of ours, I have to say. 
but we actually always drink this stuff at home. They sent us a case, so I thought I might as well share it with my buddy Try I'm and then the barely one. give Travis any left. I'll take the last drop. Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> like the sorry for the plug. I had notes. to. What's up? Just talking about the cherry oak notes of the I the can't wine. tell. Try's become a smellier in his injury timeout. A smellier. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce those. I can't tell. All right, never mind. Um, anyway. But yeah, so you you beat Burek, who you were just starstruck to practice with. Mm-hmm. Was that sort of your like, when you had that moment? Was did, was that like a welcome to the AVP tour? Like we're here, or were you thinking at that time, man, we got kind of lucky? Because I feel like there's one or two ways you can go with that that you've established yourselves, or man, we got to prove this wasn't a fluke. First of all, nobody tell Burek that Maddie was starstruck. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I'm just I'm just being honest. Hey, I love it, but if this Burek's gets back to Burek, we're all gonna hear about it. It's all right. <laughs> it's all good. All right. Um, no, I think um, we didn't think we, we made it. Um, to be honest with you, that was, I mean, aside from San Francisco, um, that was probably our my most memorable win on the AVP to make it. I think we were the 20-something seed to make it out of the qualifier. And it was our very first AVP event. So, I don't know. We weren't, there is, there's another long story behind that um, tournament. I think you might enjoy. Do you want me to get into it, or are we trying I'm, to move on? I'm always good with story time. Stories so, so that tournament was was a tough one. I'll get. Um, my, my nana was uh, was diagnosed and um, with cancer, and um, she was in the hospital. And our parents were visiting her, so my parents sent my little brother with us, Jameson. He was like 14 years old at the time. So, like, all right, we'll take him with us. And so the the night before that qualifier, our nana, who you know from mm-hmm. Hawaii. Yeah. Uh, she passed away. And so we, talk, we talked to our auntie on the phone the night before. So that, you know, added a little bit more emotion to it. And we had our little brother with us. And so going into that, uh, well, going into that, that, that qualifier, there was not a lot on the line, but we had a little bit more to fight for. And to win that, I mean, you can imagine kind of the emotional response with all of us there. And so we had to plan our very first AVP event. And so... Um, we had the option of, of getting a coach for $75. We're like, oh, who better than our 14-year-old brother? Yep. Jameson, right? And so we ended up playing Casey and Gibb the first round. We got close, but they were probably just conserving their energy. And then later that night, um, we – or no, so we didn't make it to Saturday. We, uh, we went out Friday night, and uh, me and Riley left Jameson in the Airbnb. Jameson ends up locking us out of our apartment. <laughs> <laughs> and Riley has to scale three stories up because Jameson's asleep. In and New York he's City. climbing. <laughs> and I just York made City. an Instagram post of this. I was literally spotting him from 20 feet up. Like, dude, I got you. I got you. And Riley's, like, deathly terrified. I'd be scared. So he's hanging on a ledge going across. I can't imagine how much he yelled at Jameson. Right oh, my gosh. <laughs> Lit Jameson up. But it was deserved because Riley almost died. And, or if he didn't die, I would have died trying to save him. That's kind right. of what our relationship is it's like. It's like something out of Home Alone. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> and then, so we got, um, what you call it? We, uh, so we, we got through that night, and then the, the AVP was asking if players wanted to do an exhibition match. And we went to Conover, we're like, hey, if you don't get anyone, me and Riley would love to do it. Just some two bearded guys from the qualifier playing against Jeremy Casebeer and Kochi uh, Nishimura, I Kyo. think. Yeah. Ko- Kochi? Koichi. 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 Koichi, sorry. Koichi. So From Japan. He's then, Japanese legend. So, so that was going to be on Sunday. Saturday night, we go out. Taylor Crabb is out of the tournament as well. Me, Riley, and Taylor go out. Uh, me and Riley get into a little bit of a scuffle with each other. Taylor is <laughs> thankfully there to, like, break it up. Uh, like, Riley it's, was chasing me down the street. Taylor is, like, is trying to push him back. Taylor, thank you very much. I, I could have <laughs> taken him. I could have taken him. I can him. name a few other occasions where I, where I was Taylor. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, yeah, anyway. R- Riley's, like, trying to juke Taylor on the street, and I'm kind of like, uh, he looks a little crazy. <laughs> but we got into a scuffle. We, we ended up making up. We had, to, we had to make up and then head to the AVP tournament and then play in this exhibition match, which, which went pretty well. So that was our very first AVP tournament, and not all of them are that eventful. But, yeah, I thought I'd share. And so so you guys, I think you, you make every qualifier but one. Um, San Francisco. San Francisco. And it was funny because I was training with Dylan Merrick this morning, and we reminisced Dude. on that. He did. <laughs> Dude, they played well. 
Yeah, yeah I mean, and, and who's playing, Co- um, playing with Cody Kessel? Who dude, Cody Kessel came out of nowhere. I, I didn't know who can, he was. He can jump over that I know. People think right I can there. jump high. He's yeah, sky. Kessel's he's springy. And really? I didn't know what to expect either. And I think their first round, they didn't do very well or it was close. So I was like, hmm, okay. But it was windy, and, and Dylan played really well. But anyway, that sucked. But, I mean, I'm thankful. Almost every qualifier we've played and we've gotten out. I can't say that for – most of the people. They gave you a little juice for uh, San Francisco the next year. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, so you, you, turned, you turned a bad memory into a really good one. Not qualifying to winning? <laughs> yeah, that's not bad. <laughs> it's not bad. I'll take it. I'll take it any day. That was a, that was a fun uh, uh, AVP to call on the broadcast where I had Maddie down. On the, I, just, I didn't even have to do my notes on Madison. I'm just like spewing out like, Uncle Owen's b- back home watching on TV right now, and Claudia, and That's just cool. naming the whole family is like the easiest match to call. I think a lot of people thought I was uh, a little biased because I no. just kept talking about you. I was never. Like, well, you just call it, call it how you see never, it. Never. Uh, <laughs> jumping higher, <laughs> Child, hitting harder. Childhood guys. friend, college <laughs> teammate. I got called. <laughs> I got friend. called out later in the year <laughs> by uh, the the wannabes, which is like a cheering group in, in Chicago, in New Orleans. In, yeah, so they're New Orleans based kind of traveling band of volleyball fans yeah they they were holding up a sign in uh in where was it chicago in the stands and they got on tv and it says try we know you're from hawaii <laughs> oh really because <laughs> i mentioned that i'm from hawaii and i talk about hawaii, oh, it was so. perfect you get your name on the jumbo time on a uh, yeah, jumbotron great. on the sign more more uh, strategic exactly it's strategic perfect. Now decision. The, the wannabes are great yeah any they, pub is good pub yeah they're a solid group of people i've, I've got to meet a few of them and when did so you made in and, and you mentioned his uncle Owen and I kind of want to do a little segue in a second but so you guys made all a fair amount of qualifiers and main draws in 2015 and then all of them I think in 2016 or is that San, or San Francisco 2016 I think San Francisco was 2016 okay. well, when did you guys become the Beard Bros when did that start I mean honestly it, it came from that first tournament in New York. That was that was when you yeah, got I mean, we grew him in Italy. Well so yeah. First so time we, I saw him. We yeah, we, we always had to shave when we went to SC. Sorry if my stories all revert back to Europe, but we had to shave when we were at SC, so when we went to Greece, we were like, Hey, let's let him go. Riley had grown a beard while he was in Italy and I was still at SC, but in Greece it wasn't like, Hey, you do this, I'll do this. It wasn't like that. We just kind of left it and just kept it going. And I tell people, like, I was in Greece. All the Greek women sp- spoke Greek. I was not going to find a Greek girlfriend out there. So I was like, what the <laughs> hell? I'm going to do it. Theo Brunner found a wife. Well, Just saying. maybe he has better <laughs> game than me. <laughs> <laughs> he probably does. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Probably does. He can pull a Greek girl. I can't. <laughs> um, so I was like, I don't really care what I look like. So those just kept going and going. And then we came back. I don't know why we didn't get rid of them when we came back. I, I really don't. Um, I know when I came back, I got interrogated for like 45 minutes at, at LAX. Asked me where I've been. And like, I don't know why after that I wasn't <laughs> like, ah, yeah. this, sh- this should probably go. We, we weren't like, oh, we're going to take this to the AVP. And right. We had none of those plans ahead of us. I, but I really don't know why we didn't get rid of them. And so when I think we got termed the bearded bros was, I think, in New York. Not, I mean, we made it out of the qualifier, but playing in that exhibition match. I mean, people were wondering, who are these people? People were ch- uh, cheering, like, the beard says no if I got a block. That's awesome. Yeah, so that's where I think it all evolved from. But it's nothing on our part. We just grew them. Yeah, and now, like, is there any pressure to keep them? Like, do you ever wake up and you're like, God, I just want to shave? Because my f- if I grow out th- the stubble for about four days, I'm like, man, I'm getting kind of itchy. And you've got full on – So. If you've been watching, judging how many times I twirl my <laughs> yeah. mustache, yeah. we're probably closing on 300, 400. <laughs> I'm pretty attached to it, obviously. I mean, I don't, I don't love it. I know I look better without it, but I, I'm not going to get rid of it. Now, speaking to your, your itch for all you bearded people out there, it's that three, four-month mark that is, is the tough. That's, that's, the rough, that's the rough phase. You don't really look good. People ask you, are you doing okay in your life? Like, do you need help? Um, it gets a little itchy, but once three and four are passed, dude, it, you're, you're fine. You're chilling. There we go. So we're doing a, a quick two minute, how to grow a beard tutorial. Mm-hmm. Just got to make it through the four month Riley period. Could grow a beard in like ninth grade. I feel like. <laughs> oh, he could. Yeah. That's where it all started. Like you're so much cooler when you have facial hair at that mm-hmm. age. Yeah, exactly. You're, it's like, you're just immediate legitimacy. 
<laughs> yeah, no, it's true. And I was sneaking over to Punahou after school every day, trying to sneak in the weight room. I still can't grow a beard, but yeah, I got a little chest hair, so it's I'm loving it right now. You can fit in. You're fine. Well, it's, it's so funny, though, and <clears throat> you mentioned this when you were taking a look at the manuscript of the beach volleyball book that I'm working on is your Uncle Owen. Oh, yeah, so yeah, yeah. So he got a massive sponsorship from Gillette for shaving. So he had this clean cut face. So he you know made, that he oh, made that's an excerpt that. That, that's in his book. I was like, I was reading, that, yeah. I was reading through the archives of the LA Times one day, and it was like, an, it was like from First 1988 all, or something. And the guy who's writing a book all in the history of beach volleyball, <laughs> and not to plug him, but I've read the first draft. It's actually very legit. Yeah, like he's. I'm looking forward to up it. Teaching me about my sport. And you, you wrote a forward to it, so this is we're all working yeah, on I, it. I actually learned a lot from it. Yeah. <laughs> honestly, everyone should be – it should be mandatory for all the players to read it and, like, understand where our sport comes from. Because us guys from Hawaii, we just kind of showed up and we're like, oh. Yeah. Who are these people? No. Oh, no idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so – and apparently we've got some McKibben roots. So uh, his Uncle Owen – landed this huge sponsorship from Gillette because he could keep a clean cut face and like look really good and smooth. And now you guys how, are the bigger how brothers. ironic <laughs> is that? <laughs> ironic, right? That's exactly. the word it is. I, ironic. Not that. <laughs> I know. I thought he put it in because of that. I was like, interesting. This guy does his homework. Yeah, I, I texted him one day. I was like, is your dad named Owen? He goes, no, that's my uncle. I and <laughs> I was cracking up. We've had some good nights at, uh, over at Uncle Owen. I've yeah. been lucky enough to be invited over to – Multiple fight nights over there. And yeah, not between me and Riley, but no, no, on no, pay per view. Yeah. Right. Usually, uh, in so many main draws, is it just a nuisance to be in the qualifier? Do you still get nerves? Like, oh, what's it like to be from main draw, main draw, main draw? I, I can probably back speak to for for Riley and myself. It's almost more more nerve wracking in the qualifier than it is in the main draw. You know, oh, especially yeah. after having those finishes, because people don't realize the qualifier is no easy feat, right? I'll tell you one thing. Barely anyone in the main draw wants to be in the qualifier, not because it's extra games, but because they could lose a match to some of these up-and-coming teams. That's how ruthless it is there. So going into that qualifier, you're like, oh, God, it's a lot of pressure, and you're facing good teams. I mean, we had uh, Derek Olson and Jeff Samuels in the last round yep. of that qualifier. Both I'm sorry. I, I played in so many qualifiers, like sometimes I just don't Yeah, remember. that was the last round, and, and they both went pretty far this year in main draws, and Derek Olson was playing in, in Grand Slams like – a, two years ago. Yeah. So he's in the qualifier. Legit. Yeah. Super legit. My first uh, FIVB partner, Derek Olson. Oh, really? He's cool, South dude. Africa. He's coaching. Yeah, he's coaching up at Cal right now. Yeah. The girls' side. Heard he's doing well. Yeah. But, but qualifiers, I mean, the most nerve wracking part is that you lose in the main draw. Okay, you made some money. You, you at least came out even on your trip. Yeah. You lose in the qualifier, you just went. Yeah. into the tank later yeah. and that's why i felt so bad for rafu this year just did something to the volleyball gods oh he, for, so first round in huntington his draws were him, awful him and kevin mcculloch get reed pretty and came shock which is like came honestly that's the olympics that's like a late saturday avp match yeah honestly and because rafu was in the semifinals and then in new york he gets ricardo and came First round. That's right. I remember this. <laughs> he was the number one seed in both. Rafu, I'm sorry. And he got four Olympians. I just <laughs> went paintballing with Rafu yesterday. You went what? Side story, but what? I went paintballing with Rafu yesterday. Oh, really? Where's it has my nothing call? To do with what we're talking about. Where's my call? It was a birthday party. Okay. All right, all right, all right. All right. You can't bring me. I get it. I get it. I get it. We're, gonna, we're, we're reeling it back to, to yeah, Huntington. So that's that. the last tournament this year. Well, not the last one, but. For a good while, that was the last that you played with Riley. Yeah. So he hurt his hand, right? Yeah. So what, what happened, long story short, uh, we were in the third game, uh, third the, setting. The one the match greens. that I coached, you guys. Oh, yeah. Try coach us. <laughs> they let uh, me sit on their bench for one match. And it's dude, you match. helped. He helped. But unfortunately, Riley broke his hand. Uh, like a, a ball came off my block, had so much spin on it that I guess it, it hit Riley's pinky and kind of – Twisted it a little bit, just made it very vulnerable he to breaking. Diving. Yeah, he was diving and it was he, like this. Yeah, he laid out like an open hand scoop dive. And yeah, the ball hit his hand as his hand hit the sand, and it was like, yeah, oh, it broke it. And I was, I mean, he's like, dude, something isn't right. I thought it was like, I thought I was wussing out. <laughs> like, dude, you just sprained your pinky. And he's like, he kept hand setting, so I was like, oh, it's not that bad. But he ended up having a fracture uh, in his hand. So that was not the way we all wanted to start off 2017. Right. And now you were in a position that you had, hadn't been in in a while. No. And that you needed a new partner. 
with a different last name. Yeah, like, I feel it. It was a uh, it was a new experience for me. You know, um, it's it's hard for all the players out there. You know, s- kind of circulating for new new partners, especially. I mean, it's tough on the the higher level of players, but you that's in their own echelon. They're all kind of mixing and matching. You'll end up with someone good. And but when it comes to like the middle of the way and the and kind of like the border between top qualifier and top main draw, the partner switches, as you know, just as much as me, it's you can get really you can get screwed in there. Yeah. Like really, like you can go from a middle of the way qual or uh, AVP main draw player and if partner leaves you and you're a defender because there's so many defenders, not enough blockers, you could go straight back into the qualifier. That happened to look at Derek Olson, for example. Yeah. So it is. It's a it's a scary situation to be in. Luckily, I'm a blocker, so there's not many of us out there. And lefty, which helps too. Kind of. Ish. It, if I have a small guy that wants to play on the left, but I'm just as good on the right. I don't know. On he's, the left. He's ambidextrous. <laughs> That's another story. But um, but no, yeah, it was a a, a strange situation to be in. And I I made some phone calls. People were kind of already locked up, and fortunately enough, I I got the call from Reed Pretty. You know, three time Olympian. Four-time Olympian. Four-time Olympian, three-time medal. I always I looked up to growing up. So to get that call from Reed, you know, I almost screenshot it on my phone. I was with Riley. I was like, Riley, look. I think it was that stoked, <laughs> but I couldn't help it. And so to, to get the call from Reed Pretty was uh, like a dream come true. Who would ever thought I'd get to play with this guy? Right. Yeah. And how was it just playing with someone new? Because obviously when you're playing with your brother, not only are you playing with someone that you're familiar with as a beach volleyball player, but that's someone that – if they hit the ball out, like you can call them out and just be like, "What the hell was that?" Right? But when you're playing with someone new, you're just like, "You got it." Like, you kind of got to ease into these new relationships. Yeah, I mean, I'm definitely a player to fall on the side of like, "Hey, don't worry about it." I'm definitely not going to call anyone out, but I learned a lot from Reed and on two different sides of it. One was his mentality and approach to the game, which was unique. I mean, you don't play in four Olympics and don't have this set mentality of trying to get things done or approach things differently. And so I learned a lot from him there. And then the other side of that is how he approached beach volleyball. He, he was trying to take the, uh, the tactics and um, how he gathers information in the indoor game and apply it to beach, which I thought was extremely interesting. You know, he had this whole team of people following him, but he had a, a statistician, um, I want to say Joe. And what they were able to come up with, um, at, even at practices, was just kind of revolutionary for me. So I was like, wow, this is is this what it's usually like when you uh, leave your brother for a partner? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I think everyone was kind of watching Reed from the outside because we didn't know what to think. Like, whoa! I mean, this dude's an elite indoor player and elite professional athlete. So we're all just kind of like, he's. I mean, he already said that 2020 is his I know. goal, and there's four of us guys who can make it, and we're like, whoa, that's aggressive. Like, he's trying to take one one of these spots like right off the bat like, I know. let's see what this guy's going to do and and that's w- what i understand from, from playing with him is that's just the type of person he is like he yeah. sets his goals and he's like i'm going to get that and you won't get in my way right you won't get in my way cuz these are my goals you got to admire so, it yeah it was uh, j- just a unique opportunity yeah and so you guys i mean you played austin and new york so fortunately we got the wild card to austin we we got a fifth in that um, our first round loss was to Case Beer and Mayor. I remember that because things did not go very well. And we ended up facing them off in the match to go into the semis. And unfortunately, we lost. But it was played underneath the lights in Austin. It Austin was, was cool. It was pretty, it oh, was that pretty was a dope. Cool match to watch, yeah. It was really cool. Great setup. And just the fans alone, they had so many people come out. They had one team from Austin that came out of the qualifier. Um, and they actually gave Billy and Stafford a run for yeah, the money did. first round. Which I was like, oh. But, uh, no, just just overall great event. Yeah, and what did you just learn about just how to adjust to – I mean, you've been playing volleyball your entire life, but just finding someone's set or just, like, setting a back set, how far you got to go behind your head or just the height or that sort of thing. Was that a tough adjustment to make? Because, like you said, like, you guys got whacked your first match with, against with Mayor and Reed, Beer. Yeah. Like, trying to figure out how to set him. Right, set and just, like, seam passes. Just small stuff that a lot of people might not notice that comes in handy with partnerships. <sighs> then you're talking about how it went with, with well, just Reed. with in oh. terms of not even just Reed, but I mean, you had a couple of different partners throughout the year, just mm-hmm. making that transition regularly. Yeah, no, I mean, it, it was definitely something new for me. Um, 
both the guys that I played with, though, Reed and Ty, it was nice because they, they took the reins, you know. Um, if I need to be a leader on a team, I'll be a leader. But if there's someone who can lead better than me, I will follow suit. So fortunately enough, I got to play with Reed Pretty. We already talked about him. And then I got to play with Ty Loomis, a veteran on, on, the, on the AVP, and someone with a completely different outlook, two completely different personalities. And so in my mind, I really got the best of both worlds playing with both those guys. Yeah. And now when you, when you partnered up with Ty, your first tournament was Seattle. Yeah. And you guys went one, two barbecue. We got 13th. So was that for, for those of you who know, that means you lose both your matches. Yeah. And so what <laughs> with a new partner, a lot of people might just say, all right, well, we tried it. Uh, let's go our separate ways. Why did you stay together for the next event? So I've, I've when, when Riley first uh, hurt his hand, I, I actually really wanted to play with Ty Loomis. Um, I, I love his personality. I love who he is as a person and you know, even though I didn't play with him before then, he always kind of took me and Riley under his wing. And so going into Seattle, um, Ty's a very optimistic person. And, you know, I, after that tournament, I don't know where, where, where he stood with everything, but I really wanted to see what would come next from it because I really liked working with him. He was an incredibly good mentor or sensei by name just because of his Eastern influence and philosophy. <laughs> but, um, no, I, I talk a lot about Ty, especially – or not try, but uh, <laughs> Ty Loomis, especially in San Francisco, because though we got 13th, we went into San Francisco, and um, Loomis was a very good leader, and what made him great was that he knew how to get the best out of me. And, I, I mean, I go back and forth of trying to get that out of myself, but he was able to recognize what sort of player I was, what I needed, and he, he gave that to me. He made a conscious effort to find that and, and bring that out of me in every single match or to calm me down, or you know, if you get a little stressed, to bring me back. And I, I've talked about this in, in a video we made in MCK Volleyball. It was, a, it was about breathing, and it actually helped a lot. We worked with our sports psych um, the months leading up to that tournament, but Ty would make me, especially in the finals, Ty would ask me to, to breathe with him, breathe with him in between my serving and everything. He'd bring me there, like, hey, just take a deep breath. And it, it actually helps a lot if you're willing to take all that information in, and and actually believe in it and kind of listen to someone finally instead of like someone a partner suggests something you're like yo i got my own shit to worry about like f off right so i i took that consciously and it actually made the, the world of difference so that's yeah and how much of this do just your past experience like when you did that breathing exercise for example were you thinking in the back of your mind like oh that would be like well, when I guess when you were figuring out videos, you're like, that's definitely something I want to do. Like, did you just retrace your steps throughout the season and be like, that's a good lesson I learned. Let's try to spread this out. No, how, how that video came to be was me and Riley, we, we try and plan out our, our tutorials, but yeah. sometimes life gets in the way. And half the time, half the videos we've come out with, we've had to like pivot and like, oh, sh oh shit, what, what can we come out with? And so I think Riley was gone that weekend. I was like, hey, I have an idea of how I can make a video on my own just using footage from from that and so that that's what's best about our, our channel is like we have so much information and resources to pull on it's like all right i'll just make a video on this by myself so that's how that video came to okay be. it wasn't like oh i really want to tell people the biggest thing that helped me in the avp finals but it, it really was and it just kind of evolved because we didn't have anything to shoot that week <laughs> yeah. we do plenty of scrambling for the sand cast as well but that's when some <laughs> of the that's when some of the best things happen and at least our our newest ideas that's that's i don't know i'm not saying hey don't plan anything but i will say leave room for don't let it stop you from moving forward yeah just rush them boo charge them what do they say no i don't, I don't know a, what language you are just yeah no, sorry. <laughs> I, was, I was kind of <laughs> underground pigeon right there um do you think it had a uh how different is it playing like with with Riley is your brother. You talk about like, it's easy to listen to a guy like Ty. Yeah. Riley, you have a completely different relationship with that goes, it's way more important to keep a good relationship with your brother than it is with a partner. Yeah. How does that kind of, well, I think, work? I think we would both agree that we have a hard time listening to each other. Um, because just because your brothers, if you hear one word of critique, you go straight back to the last thing he messed up on. And you're thinking like, yeah. dude, don't talk to me when you're not doing this. <laughs> right. It's just like you revert to it. And I think I'm like, 
oh, that's so bad. Like I would never treat anyone else like that. And so it's, it's this battle of trying to take um, suggestions and criticisms constructively. And I know it sounds like a very basic thing, but it's, it's hard when you're no. working with, with your brother. And yeah. one of the things that, that's helped us, I think, a lot is we've been really trying to outline, you know, let's work on three things. Uh, we came up with a video with Gina, and Gina talked about the three things that she wants to work on in practice. So we've tried to implement that. And the one thing, how that has helped us is we have a plan of, okay, this is what yeah that allowed me to just be like just be free be open and just do you because you know that Hayden's doing what he's doing perfectly yeah and even if it wasn't perfect I wasn't about to question it at least in our first yeah two years together and then I started to question it the last few years and I think it gave me an autoimmune disease <laughs> but I, 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 <laughs> I think I think when out. it does come to partnerships I think you almost have to trust one person's vision at first maybe, maybe I'm off oh totally but you have to just okay I'm just gonna go with everything you say and let's try it out because if you keep bickering yeah. going back and forth it's like okay nothing gets done and I will yeah. say who was my first partner in beach volleyball when I finished Riley McKibben Riley McKibben and his brother so I played with Riley a lot Riley was better than try really growing up. Riley kind of kind of taught me the game I mean, we started playing together. He saw, I mean, these are like. He saw a future yeah, <laughs> second are, best player <laughs> in the world. You can win like a, like a $20 Costco card, but they have to give it to your mom. Oh, so yeah. So you don't lose your NCAA eligibility. Right. Something like that. High stakes. But yeah, me and Riley started playing together and he was kind of like, he was kind of, he's a intellectual guy. He's a thinker. Yeah. And I'm, if you know me, I'm pretty much the opposite. So us playing together, he was like telling me like the secrets of beach volleyball that he had learned. Mm -hmm. He was like, they, him and Spencer uh, McLaughlin went up to Cali in high school once and, and was like living with Stein Metzger for a few days yeah. or something, like asking him questions and all that. So he brought that back. Anyway, I played with Riley and I was for sure learning a lot from him. Mm -hmm. We kind of learned to love the game together. But I think I see that same thing in your guys' relationship that he's – a little more of the intellectual guy and you as you proved with Ty are mm -hmm. more of the me I guess like yeah. intellectual I mean instinctual don't think trust our preparation mm -hmm. and in some ways just be the beast yeah like a lot of people give me credit some matches where it's like wow try you went off I was like I literally just listened to every single word that Hayden said I knew exactly what he wanted me to do and I executed mm -hmm. and it made me look really good your first win, mm -hmm. which congratulations. That's awesome. Thank you. Did you expect to win an AVP tournament this year? No. Like what was, did you have like a, <laughs> did you have like a, a timeline of goals and where would have, would winning an AVP have fallen on that? Um, I, you know, I, I wish I did have a, a further timeline of goals. Um, I know I have some goals for, for this year, but, um, I, I you know, I, I don't know where th that would have fallen. Um, with that tournament, you know, the, with a few of the other tournaments, a lot of the best teams w were not there. But when people look back 10 years from now, they will not remember that Nick and Phil weren't there. They'll just remember that me and Ty won it. So That's looking true. back, I won. But, you know, we, we didn't have a lot of the best teams there. So it was kind of the – it was the perfect storm. And so There still was – Billy and Stafford. Yeah, no, Billy and Stafford. Who had there. won in, in an almost fully loaded field two weeks before in Seattle. Yeah, and and they were playing well. Uh, and Ricardo, and the Ricardo, most decorated blocker of all time. I know. And Reed. Um, we, you know, I mean, we had to play Chase and Avery in the, in the quarters, and then Zahn and Ratledge in the semis, uh, a team I had never really wanted to go up against. Um, and then yeah, Slick and Billy in the finals. Um, I mean, I have to say, Slick, I know, wasn't hundred percent. Uh, he, he strained his ab, I believe, in the semis, even though he was still able to pull off that miraculous comeback in the semis down. I thought 14-11. You told me 14-8. 14-8 or 9. And thanks to the new AVP rules, I don't know what, what it's called, but you have to win a real point. Free at the serve. End, free serve, right. They were able to come back. And so that, that finals was – I mean, I, I can't take anything away from myself. I, I stayed in the moment, and I, I played well. I played probably the best I, that I've ever played. Which surprised me, um, <laughs> but you know, Slick wasn't one hundred percent. I mean, Billy was incredibly gnarly, and I mean, you got to look at Ty Loomis's performance. He was siding out at huge numbers every single time. Not, not like that's not like him, but we we played we played well. Yeah, 
Yeah. You guys played Austin Ball. And what I was wondering immediately after that tournament, if I'm Riley, I'm probably like, shoot, my partner is gone. Did you, was it at all like a consideration when you won that tournament? Did you have to, was there any rethinking that maybe I might have to stick it out with Ty instead of going back to Riley when he gets healthy? You know, from, from day one, um, uh, just coming back to that story, R Riley is the reason why I'm playing beach volleyball. And I didn't go back to him because of that reason. But, you know, when I first started playing with Reed, I told Reed, well, when Riley comes back, I'm going to play with him. Same thing I told to Ty. And after when San Francisco tried, I mean, Ty tried, God, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> Ty tried, you know, he, he wanted to keep going. And I, I completely understand. But for me, I've always been an incredibly loyal person, an incredibly loyal person to my brother. And, you know, we play the, the game of beach volleyball, which I, I love to do. But, you know, we both know that financially it, it's hard to sustain. Right. And playing with my brother, I, I love to, to play with my brother. It's w when we win, it's that much better. When we lose, it, it, it really sucks. But in order to make our this lifestyle sustainable, like we have to create content. We have to to develop a brand with, within this sport. And I'm not saying that I'm only playing with him because of our brand. Right. But honestly, like to when you win with someone who's who's had your back for that long, or you know who has encouraged you to pursue so many different things like that in itself is like you know what i know i had success with this one person but i'd, I'd much rather win with you and so my goal is i want to win with riley right and so I, I get to do that we get to keep making content and be these idiotic bearded brothers on the avp and and to me that's where i i want to be be in life that's and i'm completely happy with that yeah, that, I love it too. I respect it's it. great. Yeah. And so now here are you guys are, are making content. You're doing everything that, that you're mentioning there. And, and with Beach Volleyball, one of the ways to be, well, financially risky and sustainable is to play international. Now, you won an AVP, so you prove you can play with the best in the U.S. Has there ever been any thought for you and Riley to go international? I know that you're playing in the Norseka qualifier on Wednesday, yeah. which no one ever finds out about Norseka's. You can no, check your schedule don't. 100 times a day. You yeah, won't, you you won't find out until two, <laughs> two days before. I just found out the day before the <laughs> registration closes. If you go to down to the beach during one of these Norseka qualifiers, you can see pretty much an AVP going on yeah, so <laughs> at the beach, but they don't promote it. I know. Well, so, so we're going to do the USAV's job right now. We're playing in the qualifier – the south side of the Manhattan Beach on Wednesday the 14th. Which is the day that this comes out. <laughs> so if you're watching on yeah. Facebook, um, and it's going to be 8 a.m., 10 o'clock. Well, maybe you won't see it. But um, you said uh, like it was an option to go play international, right? right. You was said it? like, well, you guys want to go play. Hey, I'd love to go play internationally. Right. But the competition right now is it's incredibly competitive. And so in order to play uh, internationally, we, we've talked about this, but for the listeners out there, you need to play in this um, uh, Norseka playoff, right? And it's a single elimination tournament, 12 teams. Usually the, the teams that are playing in the FIVB aren't in this playoff. It's single elimination. The top two teams go to the Norseka. The Norseka Nors is yeah. the qualifying tour, or sorry, the continental tour. So North America, Central America, Caribbean. If you get points on this tour, those points t count towards your FIVB points. Europe has their own tour. Africa has a tour, I believe. I Asia, think Asia has a too. tour. Um, so that's how you get on the World Tour. And then, Travis, by the way. what do you do with those international points? Then from there, what do you have to go and do on the FIVB? So the international points, you start with the one stars. So there's a new star system on the FIVB. So you start with the one stars where even if you win – you're likely to lose a fairly large sum of money. Depending on where it is, how far <laughs> you have to travel to get there. So say if you go to Australia, like a few of our American teams did, and you win, you're still going to lose money because that's how low the payout is. So basically what you're doing is you're investing in yourself to get points. Those points will then get you into the two stars, which if you do well enough and lose enough money and you have enough to sustain yourself, you go to the threes, and then the fours and the fives. And even the four stars, like I talked to Theo, which you can find that on our Sandcast from last Monday or two Mondays ago. And he said that even the four stars aren't really worth going to financially. So then you have the last one, which is the majors, which are the five stars. There are only four per year. And those are really the only ones that you're going to make enough money to be like, okay, I can make a living with this game. So that is Pretty your much. FIVB I mean, ladder. If you're, 
if you're finishing top ten at a four star, you're you're making a decent chunk of change. It's making it worth your time to go. Granted, almost all the teams are going to these four stars, so you're playing the hardest tournament in the world for only making a decent chunk of change for getting top ten. If you get top ten in the world at a at a fully loaded world tour event, I feel like you should come out pretty damn happy with your payout. Yeah, right? and two in a, in a normal sport. And two, so a lot of the times, what your points will do, they're not getting you into the main draws. They're only getting you into the qualifiers or sometimes into the country quota. So you'll have times where you can get into a country quota for a four star, which a few of our teams did, which is played in say the Hague. And you, if you lose in the country quota, not only you don't get any prize money, obviously you don't even get a single point. Well, you don't get money out of the qualifier either. Right. right. Yeah. So you and have you to make a main draw to get money. For. That's, that's the one thing me and me Jeez. and John started when I first went on the world tour, me and Hayden were in the qualifiers and like Madison said earlier, that's the most nerve wracking thing you can play in for sure. But we'd win the qualifiers and we'd just w- be celebrating like, yeah, free hotel room. Like, <laughs> you don't have to stay here because you make your flight like you're going to do well in the tournament. So you don't have to stay there, pay for We're focused on the AVP and we're making content for our MCK volleyball YouTube channel. For the fans. For the people. We speak for the people. <laughs> <laughs> And with these shoot days too, like, have you guys figured out a plan with what you want to do moving forward? Just like, say, what would fans maybe be able to expect from you guys at AVP Huntington or AVP Austin? Like, are you guys going to be shooting stuff? Or at that point, are you more concentrated just on volleyball and winning, not just like what's no, some good like, content we can so put what, out? what we've um, run into is like, I used to think we had like a time management problem, right? Because we shoot, we edit, we, we do all our stuff. We're like, oh, I don't have enough time. We come up with videos every Wednesday. But um, what I realized, it's, it's, not a ma- it's not a management problem. It's, a, it's an integration problem, right? So how can we, you know, set up a practice and then film something right afterwards or actually film something while we're doing practice? And I think we're getting better at that. And that's what we're trying to, to move into. And we're, we're still going to continue to create, um, like, tutorials. Uh, I mean, those a lot of people enjoy that. But we're also we're exploring other categories of content, but all related to volleyball. And I'm not going to share any of those, but they're, it's actually really fun and just kind of plays to why we like doing it because it's, it's crazy and it's fun and it's something that, you know, excites us. If we ever get to the point where we're just mundanely coming out with instructional videos, like, I'm gonna kill myself. <laughs> so I, like we, we're always like, "Yep, that's a good idea." We we always just say like we always say yes to everything, never say no, and we don't really know what we're doing, so there's no wrong answer. Like that's most of the fun. Like yep. me and Try don't know a whole lot what we're doing with Sandcast. We're just like, "Yep, this is what we're doing today." You gotta charge it. <laughs> Let's you do know? it. Like I mean, th- there's a saying that that I r- really like, and there was a there was this pottery teacher, right? And he split the class in half, and he had half the class. The whole objective of the class was make the best pot you could possibly make. Half the class, they would plan one pot that they're going to make. And at the end of the semester, they're going to make that exact pot because they're planning it. Then the other half of the class had to make one pot per day, right? Now, who do you think made that best pot? And this story has been told with, like, knives or whatever. But who do you think made the best pot? The, the person who planned that whole time to make one pot or the group that just kept making stuff wing and making it. stuff and making stuff. Yes, winging it. There's a difference <laughs> between winging it and seeing what happens, so we'll see what happens. Yep. MacGruber. MacGruber. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so, uh, yeah. should we wing it on this last bottle of wine? Yeah, yeah I was about to yeah, say. Yeah, yeah, let's so, I want to get into our final segment here, which is fan questions. You, had a, you guys had a couple. Uh, we did advertise that you would be on with Riley. Riley's out. He's sick. I could probably speak on his behalf. Oh, I know him <laughs> that well. I mean, half the time we say the same thing. So while we get the fan questions ready, we're going to just pause for, we'll have a Riley for just a, a quick bottle of wine here. Now, this is also a sponsor, right? Yeah. So I think I said earlier, Rebel Coast Wine, you know, I've always been a fan of them. I actually met the, the founder at Shellbacks one night, and I recognize them. I just love what they do with their wine company. They're just – they're kind of like like, I said, like, the, like the people's wine company. You should check them out. They're just a fun group of people that, you know, travel around in two yellow VW buses. The guy has a big mustache, so obviously I was attracted to this bottle. <laughs> obviously I was attracted to him. No, <laughs> to this bottle. So, no, it, it's been fun to work with them. Um, and, and I think uh, along the lines of making content, it, it allows us to create um, – <laughs> 
<laughs> it allows us. <laughs> a little slow there, sorry. It allows us to have more uh, more latitude on how we could potentially make content with sponsors, and that's what I like because we both studied business, me and Riley, and so when we're making content. It's like, hey, how can we, um, you know, uh, creatively make content for brands and. Oh, we got a little wine spillage. Uh, I was trying to let you guys hear the. So the it's pour. it's been a fun experience to to work with a company like this, especially a wine company, because I like wine. Yeah, and now we're we're all sponsored also by Wilson, <coughs> so we're gonna have a Madison oh, yeah. McKibben signed mini Wilson volleyball, and yeah. so to to win that. Do you want me to say it? Madison McKibben, yeah, go ahead. Okay. You can be the spokesman. Cool. Are we on this camera or that camera? All right, and just for the – so those who are listening to the audio version of this, you can find the live podcast back on the McKibben Facebook, yeah. which is where we will be able to win this volleyball. This volleyball. And this isn't going to be an every time thing. This is our first test, our, our trial of this. So I hope you guys enjoy it. But So to win this volleyball, if you're on Facebook right now or if you're listening to this podcast, all you have to do is go to MCK Volleyball. Find this live stream, which will be hosted on MCK Volleyball. And all we want you to do is, is comment tagging two friends, all right? So, and if you have anything to say on recommendations, if you like this, if you didn't, if you want to see more of it, what the three of us are trying to do, and Riley included, is, I mean, I know this is used more often than not, is, is grow the sport, right? But we want to hear your feedback, and we want you guys to share this with people who might be interested in, in might be interested in it. So... To get this signed volleyball, I'll have Riley sign it as well. Tag two friends in the comment section, and if you feel like it, leave us a comment on what you thought about it. And then we will we'll pick our winner. I guess, Madison, you and Riley, you, sure. you can pick the winners. I'll pick the winner. All right, so the McKibbins will pick the winners, yeah, like and we that. will get this Madison McKibbins signed volleyball Thank to you. you.